I felt sorry for Jennifer Aniston. She could never get away from them, their happiness, her betrayal, their paltritudinous fecundity. But now, celebrity levels of pain are available to all of us. I met him in a chat room in 1998. He moved in with me in 2000. He broke up with me in 2009. In 2010, I saw him on the street with another woman. I answered an invitation to connect on LinkedIn from a colleague. And on the side of my uh, page was the woman's picture, her full name, and where she worked, information I hadn't sought out, didn't want to know, and now could never unknow. I um, began seeing ads next to my Gmail. These were for an opportunistic info product that capitalized on the heartbroken. It was uh, tagged to words of despair in my own emails. I was so upset about this, I uh, wrote to Google and I was like, your algorithms have a tin ear for human pain. I stopped using webmail and I had stopped using LinkedIn. Uh, then uh, Google decides to uh, institute unilaterally social search. So I'm at work, I search Street Easy, up pops my boyfriend's icon next to my search results. I'm like, they're looking for an apartment together. My, my heart was pounding. I was breathing fast, but I was like, no, I have to check it out. It was just a tech discussion on G+. I opted out of social search. I never went to G plus again. So then uh, Google changes its privacy policy. And everybody, all the tech blogs, they're like, you have to go take control of your data, micromanage, oh right, I went in. And uh, there was a bookshelf. I did not know they had a bookshelf. They were tracking my book searches. It was the most depressing bookshelf in the world. It was, um, you know, all the grief and recovery and heartbreak books I'd been looking up. I, deleted everything, I said, do not track, and then it said Latitude. Now, Latitude was a phone app that I'd installed, and then, of course, uninstalled to pre prevent any pain. It tracked our mutual phones. Um, and then uh, it said, uh, you're gonna delete all your data. I was like, okay, great. And now it had jumped onto my uh, computer, and I didn't even know it was a Google product. I clicked uh, privacy settings, up came a map. It was 7 in the morning on a Thursday. My boyfriend was not in his bed. He was several miles away. And uh, I was watching him in real time sleeping with another woman. And uh, I uh, did get to work, but I had to take off. Um, I didn't go in the next day. I spent 48 hours watching his icon. Uh, I. Um, uh, sort of was dry heaving into the toilet. I was crying. I thought I was going to get a nosebleed. I thought I would throw myself off the roof. I was going to wear this dress, and uh, it would be very uh, picturesque. Um, and, uh, but the uh, slumlord had blocked off the roof access. So uh, I didn't finish my privacy settings. I turned the computer off. I was like, how the hell did I get sucked into that? So. When you know your privacy uh, policy induces suicidal ideation, that is bad user experience. <laughs> but it seems to be an acceptable corollary of our desire to gather all the information, uh, cross-leverage it, and parcel it out contextually to all comers. This noble enterprise is uh, spearheaded by people who say things like M move, move fast and break things and privacy is for old people. More nuanced and humane views, and I would say feminine uh, uh, hu views of human condition are forced in a, to a sort of self-exile, leaving the sphere of the public uh, space and achievement in the internet for hackers and spammers and uh, uh, you know, people who want to move fast and break things. And what's broken is the human experience. And it's not something you can opt out of.